Hi everyone, welcome to Hatha Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua. Grab the usual props that you may have handy like two blocks, a strap, and a blanket. And please find a comfortable seat to begin in. Taking a moment to mentally and physically arrive in your practice. Know what that looks like for you. For some, it's shifting the weight around throughout the pelvis. It's looking around in your space and just grounding visually. For some, it's closing your eyes and placing a hand at your heart and your belly. Notice what works for you to connect with what's here now. So we are here in Los Angeles, California in our last week of winter, 2022. And these seasonal changes are often good times to, to reflect on how we're moving forward, what continues to work for us. But also interesting as one season ends or sort of say dies and we go into the next, it brings up feelings of how we connect with change, how we relate to the death of something, sort of say. So here is an excerpt about release. It's called the release or death from the Yoga Almanac. Humans have attempted to explain death with deities and mythology since before recorded time. Death is life's greatest unknown. Regardless, death is one of life's foundational certainties, transcending time, place, and circumstance. The one thing we cannot explain is the one thing that resolutely binds us. A parigraha is fittingly the last of the yamas. You'll remember the first limb of the eight limbs of yoga described by Patanjali and instructs non-attachment. Accepting the body's mortality is the ultimate practice of a parigraha. The mortal suffering of birth, death, and rebirth is known in Hindu and yogic theory as samsara. Unification with the divine consciousness breaks the cycle. Patanjali writes that practicing the eight limbs of yoga from Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, and Samadhi leads to this unification. This, like all beliefs about what happens in death, is a personal subjective truth, personal satya. Yoga is, at its core, the acceptance of our mortality. Yoking body and mind distills the chatter so that we can arrive fully in the present. Acceptance of our body's temporality of death allows us to keep moving forward, rekindling our will to live and let live. So how are you embracing change? We can think of death as sort of like this, this one of the greatest changes, right? As we don't know for sure what's on the other side of it. But how are you embracing this transition the wrapping up of one season into the next. Just food for thought. How can we bring in the practice of non-attachment, non-grasping, non-possessiveness, invite a sense of surrender and ease within this transition through a parigraha. Take a moment here, maybe close your eyes, maybe join your hands to meet at your heart as you're sensing how you're feeling in your physical being, your mental and emotional being, your energetic state. Let's start to deepen the breath in through the nose, out through the mouth, slowing it down in through the nose, out through the mouth. Once more deep, Grounding breath. What is your body asking from you in this practice today? What is your heart asking from you in this practice today? Take a moment to clarify your sankalpa, your intention, or say your personal prayer. And as we set the ego aside, not being attached to the outcome, 
Think of someone that you care about or a group of beings that you care about to offer this practice to, making a dedication. And together, let's start by creating resonance using our voices. Three chants of Om. Take a deep breath. recognizing your inner guidance. Remind yourself throughout the practice of your intention and continue to align with that in how you approach the physical practice, resting when you need. Let's deepen the breath through the nose. So lips close, softly constrict the back of your throat, taking long, balanced inhales and exhales while gently whispering the breath through the nose. So bringing a calm state to body and mind using ujjayi pranayama, victorious breathing. Continue to sustain your breath, softly whisper it. And if your eyes are closed, gently blink them open, release your hands, and let's make our way onto hands and knees, all fours. Preparing to move to the breath in cat-cow, Vitalasana. So as you breathe in, draw your heart forward and roll your shoulders back and down, coming into cow pose. As you breathe out, press your palms down, lift your belly up towards the spine, dropping your head to round your back, cat pose. Then again, inhale, draw the shoulder blades down, lifting your heart and your tailbone Exhale, contract your belly, tucking your tailbone and dropping your skull. And take another two or three rounds of Bidalasana, cat cow pose. At the end of your next exhalation, rounding your back, Then relax to a neutral spine and see that your wrists are directly under your shoulders. Your fingers are spread flat. Your knees are directly under your hips. Then engage your belly as you look on the ground, just ahead of your hands, tuck your right toes behind you, straightening the leg as you press your inner right heel back, firm your outer hips towards your midline and maybe start to explore reaching your left arm forward so the upper arm is alongside your ear, palm facing the right wall. If so, slide your left shoulder bone back into its socket, lengthening the left and right sides of your neck. Maybe explore lifting your right foot off the floor. You're lifting from the inner thigh, turning your right outer hip to face the ground. Let's take another three deep breaths. Rooting down to your right palm, lifting the energy up through the right shoulder, lengthening crown, center of your chest, forward, tailbone, inner right heel, back. One more deep breath. And then set your left hand flat on the ground so the wrist is right under your shoulder. Lower your right toes and spin your right heel flat into the floor, rooting the outside edge of that foot into the ground. Press the floor away with your left hand and begin to raise your right arm straight up into a variation of side plank. Now, if you're needing more support to balance here, slide your left foot behind you so that your left shin is perpendicular to your mat. 
feel your left side waist. Lift away from the floor. Draw your left shoulder blade down away from your neck. Last couple of breaths. Sweep the right arm overhead. Take an extra breath into the right wall of your rib cage here, offering that side body stretch. Set your right hand back down, right knee to the ground, back to all fours. Take a slow breath in and gently whisper it out through your nose. Now knit the bottom of your front ribs in towards the back, lengthen the crown forward, then tuck your left toes on the mat. With your left leg straight, firm your inner left heel back, firm your outer hips towards your center line, and look on the ground just ahead of your hands. Maybe begin to raise your right arm forward, upper arm alongside your ear and palm facing the left wall. And if so, draw the right shoulder bone back, even out the shoulders, lengthen the neck, deep breaths. Perhaps experiment with flexing your left foot off the floor, lifting the leg from your inner thigh and turning your left outer hip to face the ground. Let's take another three breaths here, creating traction along the spine, rooting down through the left palm to lift energy up. Feel the navel lift towards your back. Set your right palm down so the heel of the palm is right underneath your right shoulder. Lower your left toes on the ground and spin your left heel flat on the floor. Root the outer edge of your left foot into the ground. As you press the floor away with the right hand, raise your left arm towards the sky, coming into a variation of Vashistasana, side plank. Now, if you're feeling kind of wobbly here, then go ahead and slide your right foot behind you so that your right shin is perpendicular to your mat. Feel the right side of your waist lift away from the floor as you press both of your shoulder blades further down your back ribs. Reach your tailbone towards your inner left heel and let's take two more deep breaths. Sweep your left arm overhead and take an extra breath into the left wall of your rib cage, feeling that lateral extension. Place your left hand, left knee on the ground. And let's take a pause in Balasana, child's pose, bringing the inner edges of your feet to touch. Grab a couple of blocks and place them across your mat about a foot in front of your knees. Place the blocks on their medium, second level height, or lowest height that might be more comfortable. You can experiment. And start by extending your arms forward, palms face down. Then rotate your outer upper arms towards the floor to broaden across your shoulders and place your bent elbows on the blocks, exactly your shoulders width apart, not any wider. Press your fingertips into each other and trace your thumbs down the back of your skull, back of your neck, maybe down towards between the shoulder blades, lowering your head to whatever degree is available. Slide your shoulder blades down your back ribs. Sink your pelvis back towards your heels. Keep rolling your triceps towards the floor. Let's take another five slow breaths. Listen in. Draw your navel towards your spine and on an inhale, lift off of the blocks, place them off to the sides of your mat. And let's make our way into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Taking the first few breaths, if you like, to pedal your feet slowly in place, warming up 
your hamstrings and calves, maybe shaking your head and loosening your neck. Spread your thumbs towards each other. Stretch your index fingers towards the front of your mat or towards the outer upper edges of your mat. And roll your triceps towards the earth, broadening across your shoulders as you soften the back of your neck. Feel free to bend your knees to get your hips as high as available here while drawing them back and sinking your heels deeper towards the mat. Now set your eyes on one spot. Let's pause for another three slow breaths. Taking a slow flow vinyasa on your next inhalation, glide forward into the top of a push-up, pausing for about three breaths. As you stack your shoulders over your wrist, choose to either keep your legs straight or place your knees on the ground directly under your hips. Keep lifting the belly, rotating the triceps towards the back wall, lengthening your neck. Now take an inhale and glide forward. Keep your elbows straight. Go as far as you can forward, then exhale, bend your elbows to point at the back wall. Hug them towards your side ribs, pause halfway down, breathe in, lift the navel, lengthen the neck, Chaturanga Dandasana. Exhale, lower all the way down. Firm the tops of your feet into the ground, and as you stack your bent elbows right above the heels of your palms, hug your elbows close to your ribs. Then inhale, roll the fronts of your shoulders behind you, pressing them down, lift your chest forward, and let's take three breaths in Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Notice that your feet are parallel here as you're actively stretching your heels towards the back wall. Toenails are all pressing into the earth so the knees are lifted off the ground. Take another breath in and reach your sternum towards the front of the room. Tucking your toes from in your belly and exhale, press up to hands and knees or full plank. Then lift your hips back, downward facing dog. Inhale, raise your right leg behind you. And as you exhale, bend that knee towards your nose. Step your right foot through beside your right thumb. Come onto the ball of your back foot with fingertips on blocks or the floor. Let's flow to the breath. Inhale, in your lunge, sinking your hips. Exhale into a wide pyramid pose. Keep your feet where they are and straighten your front leg, bowing to the inside of it. To the breath, inhale, back to your high lunge. Exhale, scissor your right hip back to straighten the leg and fold. One more time. Inhale, high lunge. Exhale, pyramid pose. Inhale into a kneeling lunge. Lower the back knee, untuck the toes. Root down the sole of your right foot and sweep your arms overhead for Anjaneyasana. Keep that scissoring action of your right outer hip back as you stack the front knee just above the heel. Roll your left outer hip forward and lift your frontal hip bones. Hooking the thumbs here, gently pull them apart as you slide your upper arms behind your ears or towards that direction and plug your shoulder bones down, coiling your chest up. Stretch the tailbone downward, and let's take another three breaths. Exhale your hands to the floor, step into plank pose. Inhale, glide forward, keep the elbows straight. Exhale, bend the elbows back to graze your side ribs. Come all the way down from Chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, coil your chest up. Exhale, press through plank, then downward facing down. Take a slow breath here. Inhale, sweep your left leg behind you. Exhale, bend that knee towards your nose. Lightly step the foot through 
beside your left thumb. Stay high on the ball of your back foot in a high lunge, fingertips on the ground or blocks. Inhale here, sinking your hips. Keep your feet where they are. Exhale, straighten your front leg and bow forward. Two more. Inhale, back to your lunge. Exhale, scissor your left outer hip back to pyramid pose. Inhale, lunge. Exhale, pyramid. Lower the back knee, let's come into a kneeling lunge, untuck the back toes. Firm down to your left foot and sweep your arms overhead. Switch the hook of your thumbs here. And as you scissor the left hip back, bend the front knee right on top of the heel and rotate the right outer hip forward. Lift your frontal hip bones and stretch your tailbone down as you peel your upper arms towards behind your ears and drop the shoulder blades, coiling your chest up. Let's take another three breaths, pulling the thumbs apart. As you exhale, place your hands in the mat, step into plank pose. Again, inhale, glide forward, keep the arms straight. Exhale, point your elbows back to frame your side ribs, this time lower, or flip your toes into upward facing dog. Cobra or upward dog, breathe in. Exhale, lift the hips back, downward facing dog. Steady your gaze, your drishti, and let's take three deep breaths. Bend your knees, look ahead of your hands and empty your breath. Then walk or float your feet to the front of your mat in a forward fold. Press your legs to the ground or blocks. Inhale, stretch the top of your head forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, circle your arms, rise all the way up. Interlacing your fingers, flip your palms inside out. Press your left foot deeper into the earth as you reach the heels of your palms towards the sky. Relax the shoulders down and exhale to side bend to the right for a few breaths. With both of your frontal hip bones really facing forward, stretch your tailbone down between the heels, but continue to lift the spine as you breathe in. Press towards the right wall with your heels of your palms as you breathe out. Two more breaths. Draw in your navel, inhale, rise up. Maybe switch the cross of the thumb and index as you flip the palms up, slide the shoulders down. Inhale, stand tall. Root your right foot deeper. Exhale, begin to side bend to your left. Your breaths. Inhale, rise all the way up, and exhale. Bring your palms together at your heart in Padasana. Let's begin two rounds of flowing to the breath in Surya Namaskar, sun salutation. You let the big toes touch. Bring your knees to touch. Take a slow inhale to sit into chair pose. Exhale, bow over your legs. Press the ground, block to the floor. Inhale, rise forward halfway up. Step into plank pose. Exhale, glide forward and lower through Chaturanga. Choosing cobra or upward dog, breathe in. Oil your chest up. Exhale, downward dog. Traditional way, spin the left heel down and step the right foot forward beside your right thumb. Inhale, rise to warrior one. Exhale from plank, lower into Chaturanga Dandasana. Again, choose cobra or upward dog as you breathe in. Exhale, downward facing. Spin the right heel down, step the left foot beside the left thumb. Inhale, rise to warrior one. Exhale, lower 
in your own way to your vinyasa. Meeting in downward dog, still your body and steady your gaze. Let's take three deep breaths. Bend your knees, look past your fingertips, empty your breath, then walk or fold your feet. Gather at the top. Inhale, lengthen your spine forward. Exhale, fold. Feet together, bend your knees together. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, Padasana, hands to the heart in mountain pose. One more round of sun salutation B. Inhale, chair pose, Uttanasana. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, half fold, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, walk or float, to lower into your vinyasa. Keep going. At downward dog, spin the left heel down and step the right foot forward. Inhale, rise, Virabhadrasana one. Ride your exhale into your vinyasa. Downward dog, spin the right heel down, step the left foot forward. Inhale, rise, Virabhadrasana one. Exhale into your vinyasa. Downward dog, pause for three deep breaths. After the third exhale, walk or float to the front of your mat. There, inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, rise up. Take our blocks, turn to face the wide width of your mat, and stand at the center. Open your arms wide and step or jump your feet about as wide apart as your hands can reach, and place your blocks in their tallest height behind your calves. Start by turning out your right leg from the hip, so that the right foot will be our front foot. Turn in the left leg about 45 degrees and align your right heel to the arch of your left foot. So I'm not mirroring you here on the camera. So bending your right knee to stack just on top of your right heel, rotate your right glute underneath your body slightly to point your right knee towards the pinky toe. Press the top of your left thigh bone back and stack your shoulders right above your hips as you open your arms wide, press the shoulders down and steady your gaze just past your right hand. Now let's pause here, breathing slowly for five cycles in warrior two. Straighten your right leg, prepare for triangle, maybe shorten your stance a couple inches. Glide your hips towards the back leg, reach your right hand past the right knee. Place that hand just to the right side of your right shin on a block or the floor, firming your right outer leg and arm against each other. Keep rolling the right glute underneath your body Tack the crease of your right hip back towards your outer left foot and stretch the top of your head forward towards the wall in front of your right foot. Raise the left arm up and spiral your chest towards the sky, maybe gazing up past your left thumb. Take another five breaths here in triangle. Rotate your left tricep to face the 
wide width of your mat you're facing and reach the left arm overhead, taking a couple less breaths in a more side stretch. And root down to your feet and inhale, rise up. Parallel your feet to start and then turn out your left leg from the hip, 90 degrees. Turn in your right leg, 45 degrees and align your left heel to the arch of your right foot. Bend your left knee to stack just above your left ankle Wrapping the sitting bone underneath, point the left knee towards your pinky toe. Press the top of your right thigh bone back and stack your shoulders right above your hips as you open your arms wide. Steady your gaze just past your left hand and let's take another five slow breaths in Virabhadrasana two. Straighten the front leg, preparing for triangle pose. You might shorten your stance a couple inches. Glide your hips sideways towards the back leg. Reach your left hand past your front knee and place that hand just to the left of your left shin, right underneath your shoulder. Maybe using a block here. Firm your left arm and outer leg against each other. Rotate your left glute under your body, just like warrior two. Tack the crease of your left hip back towards your outer right foot and lengthen the crown of your head forward towards the wall in front of your left foot. With the right arm straight up, spiral your chest towards the sky and perhaps gaze just past your right thumb. Let's take another five breaths in Trikonasana. Rotate your right tricep to face the wide width of your mat you're facing and reach that arm overhead for more lateral extension. Two more breaths. This time, take a look at your front foot and lower your hands to frame it. Step back into plank pose, perhaps flow through a vinyasa or cat cow. Let's meet in downward facing back. Downward facing dog. Bring your feet together to touch. Spread your fingers. Imagine you have a little suction cup underneath each fingertip. Press the base of your thumb and index into the floor. Broaden your shoulder blades apart and rotate your triceps towards the ground. Soften the back of your neck. Now with a steady breath, firm in the belly and glide forward into plank, stacking your shoulders right above your wrists and firming your inner heels back as you lift the navel towards your spine. Rot rotating your triceps towards the back wall. Now look at your right wall and spin onto the outside edge of your left foot flexed. Stacking both feet or adding support by stepping the right foot directly in front of you like a kickstand on a bike. Press the ground away and raise the right arm towards the sky. Side plank, Vashistasana. So if both feet are stacked, make sure all your toes are curling up towards the shins. You're actively pressing the inner heels towards your rear wall and stretching your tailbone towards your inner heels. And as you root down through the left palm, draw the left shoulder blade down your back and lift the left side of your waist. Last two breaths. Sweep your top arm overhead, take another inhale here, keep lifting away from the floor. Slowly transition to plank and back to downward facing duck. A few breaths. Let your feet touch, root down to the base of your thumb and index. 
find stability in your shoulders by rotating your triceps towards the earth and plugging your shoulder bones back into their sockets. Now firming in the belly, inhale, glide forward into the top of a push-up, stacking shoulders over wrists. Firm your inner heels back and activate your quadriceps. Lift the navel towards the back and activate your abdomen. Lengthen your neck and roll onto the outside edge of your right foot flexed. If you want more support to balance, step the left foot in front of you like a kickstand. Otherwise, left foot is flexed on top of the right. Raise your left arm towards the sky, just like triangle pose, stacking your shoulders and your wrists. As you press the ground away, feel the rebounding lift of your right hip and side waist. Deep breaths. Vashisthasana, side plank. Sweep your top arm overhead. Take another two breaths here. Slowly transition from plank down to Sphinx pose, gliding forward and all the way down. Slide your forearms in front of you, lifting your chest to stack your shoulders over your elbows. Bring your knees as close together as you can and press every toenail into the floor as you extend your chest forward. Let's take a few breaths here. Maybe moving the head gently side to side or any direction to help loosen your neck. Then cross your left forearm in front of your chest and bend your right knee. Backstroke your right arm to externally rotate the right upper arm. With your right hand, catch hold of the big toe side of your right ankle or foot, not the pinky toe. Press your two frontal hip bones into the ground and turn your chest completely a face forward. Breathe. With your knees no wider apart than your hips distance, gradually bring the right heel just to the outside of your right hip, taking about five more breaths, stretching into your right quadricep and your inner right shoulder. You might experiment with spinning your right palm at the wrist so that your fingertips face the front of your mat. One more deep breath. Exhale, release the right leg, place both forearms in front and scoot your knees close together again. Take a deep inhale into your belly, into your lungs. Open your mouth wide for lion's breath. Let any sound out. Side two, close the lips again, ujjayi breathing. Cross your right forearm on the ground in front of your chest. Bend your left knee. Backstroke your left arm and catch hold of the big toe side of your left foot or ankle. Plant both frontal hip bones on the floor and turn your chest completely to face forward. Separate your knees no wider apart than hips distance. Gently bring the left heel slightly to the outside of your left hip for about five more breaths. Maybe exploring spinning your left palm at the wrist and pointing your fingertips forward. Releasing your left leg, rest your forehead on the floor and scoot your knees as close together as you can. Let's prepare to bend both knees and catch both feet in Danyurasana. Now, if you're not able to catch hold of both feet, instead, keep your legs straight and interlace your fingers like this when we lift up and you'll move into bound locust pose instead. Otherwise, catching hold of your outer feet to start, 
Keep your knees no wider than hips distance, the whole pose. Press your pubic bone into the ground. Kick your feet away as you pull them towards you, lifting your knees, coil your chest up. Press the shoulder blades down your back without straining your neck. Look on the ground ahead and take five or more deep breaths. Done your rest, bow pose. And when you're ready to let it go, you might make a pillow out of your forearms to rest your forehead on. And windshield wiper your shin side to side to help loosen your lower back. Let's take three breaths to rest into the belly, out through the mouth. And then from here, place your hands alongside your ribs and press up to sit. Come on up to your knees and we'll take one round of camel pose, Ustrasana. If you want some cushion for your knees, you can place your blanket underneath or fold your mat thicker on that side. Grab a block here and let's use a skinny width to firm right between our thighs, close to your knees. Tuck your toes behind you. Place your palms on your lower back, fingertips face down. Lift your frontal hip bone slightly, like we did in the kneeling lunge, and lengthen your tailbone actively towards the ground between your knees. At the same time, lift your back ribs away from your pelvis, so you're actively lengthening your lower spine. Focus on back bending mostly, right underneath your shoulder blades. Keep your pelvis forward, stacked right above your knees. Just by bending your elbows closer and closer together, notice how you're already broadening your collarbones. Continue to hug the elbows close together. And breathe in, lift your sternum and drop your shoulder heads back and down, beginning your back bend for five or more deep breaths. Now if reachable, you could reach one hand to catch the heel behind you and then the other hand too or switch sides, or keep your hands on your lower back. Make sure your hips stay right above your knees and don't move behind them. Think of spinning your inner thighs towards the back wall as you stretch the tailbone down. And when you finish Ustrasana Camel Pose, Place your hands on your lower back, roll your spine upright, and come to sit with your feet in front of you. Set your feet apart on the floor, hips distance parallel, and let's lie down on our backs for one more back bend bridge pose. You can decide if you want to use a block again between your knees and thighs or not. Just make sure you don't splay out the thighs or turn out the feet. Locate your feet first by bringing your arms down by your sides. Walk your heels back until you could almost touch them with your fingertips. Ground the backs of your shoulders and tilt your chin slightly back to open your throat. Parallel your feet and press them down as you inhale to lift your hips. Five to 10 breaths, your count before lowering. Walk your upper arms as close together as you can under your back ribs. Keep your arms straight, and if your hands meet, perhaps interlace your fingers. Actively stretch the fronts of your thigh bones forward, spinning your inner thighs slightly towards the ground, engaging your hamstrings as if you were dragging the heels towards your glutes. Feel your breath expand your chest, lifting your heart center. Tattu Bandha Sarvangasana. When you decide to lower your spine all the way down slowly, take hold of your bent knees and gently rock 
side to side, massaging your sacrum onto the ground. And then let's turn all the way over to one side and slowly press yourself up. Come to sit with your legs in front of you as we prepare for a seated spinal twist. Extend your right leg forward, I'm mirroring you here, and either step the left foot on the floor in front of your left hip or cross that foot outside of your right knee. You might also bend your right knee. Backstroke your left hand to the ground behind your pelvis. Sit up tall, rooting the left and right sitting bones. Raise your right arm up and take a deep breath in as you stretch your spine upright. Exhale, begin to twist to your left side. Then lower your right arm, either holding your left shin or hooking your elbow outside of the thigh. Each inhale, press down into the surface below to rebound a lift up your spine. Each exhale, soften your belly in and continue to turn your chest into the twist. Finish this exhalation. Unwind your spine and bring the sole of your left foot high onto the inside of your right thigh for revolved head to knee pose. Now you can either use a strap, place it around the ball of your right foot flexed and hold the strap in your left hand. Right hand's gonna be on the ground outside of the right hip or you can catch hold of that outer foot if it's very reachable for you. Press the pelvis down again, sit up tall. Inhale here, start upright and exhale, twist to your right. Then begin to bow in that direction towards the upper right corner of the room. Making sure that left hip stays on the ground, stretch your spine from your pelvis as you inhale. Firm in the belly and fold further as you exhale. Harita Janu Shirshasana. Inhale, lift from your chest to rise up, and let's extend the left leg forward to prepare for the twist. Try to go for the same setup as you did on the first side. Right foot steps in front of the right hip or crosses outside of the left knee and or bend the left knee too. Backstroke the right hand on the ground behind your pelvis and raise your left arm. Press downward to lift upward, inhale. Exhale, twist to your right, either hold your shin or hook the elbow outside of the thigh. Inhale, press down, lift up. Exhale, continue to twist. A few more breaths. The end of this exhalation, unwind your spine, drop your right thigh open, and bring the sole of your right foot high up on your inner left thigh for revolved head to knee pose. So remember you could use a strap around the ball of your left foot and hold the strap with your right hand. Left hand, place it on the ground outside of your left hip. Breathe in, press the pelvis down, sit up tall. Breathe out, twist to your left side, and then exhale, begin to bow towards the upper left corner of the room. If you're not holding the strap, catch hold of your outer foot. Ground your right sitting bone, and keep stretching your spine from the pelvis as you hold in Parita Janusha Next inhale, slowly rise up. And let's prepare for sitting cross-legged or double pigeon pose. Take your right shin and cross it on top or in front of your left shin. 
If you are stacking your ankles and knees and know that you can elevate your pelvis here on a folded blanket, that helps you to sit up tall. Make sure that you're flexing your feet if you're coming into double pigeon pose. Root down to your sitting bones, stretch the front and back of your spine, drop your shoulders back and down and take a deep breath in. Slightly firm the belly. And exhale, begin to hang Walking the hands forward, inhale, pelvis down, stretch the spine from it. Exhale, maybe hold a little deeper. Going a few more breaths. Start to lift from your chest. Inhale, slowly rise. Stretch both legs out in front of you. Maybe give them a little shake. A little movement. And now let's cross the left shin forward or on top of the right shin. Whether you're sitting cross-legged or you're stacking your ankles and your knees. And if the latter, make sure to flex your feet. Stabilize the knees. Ground your sitting bones. Breathe in. Lengthen the front and back of your spine. Relax the shoulders. Breathe out. Begin to hinge forward from your hips. Pause. Breathe in. Root down and lengthen. Breathe out. See what's available as you continue to bow. Firm in the belly a bit. Inhale. Begin to lift your sternum and rise. Now let's stretch both legs forward to prepare for one more forward fold, Hashimottanasana. You might opt to use a strap around the balls of your feet here, or eventually clasp your big toes. Get down your sitting bones, flex your feet, and press the big toe mounts forward, slightly rolling your inner thighs down to firm your outer hips towards your lower spine and offer your lower back some support. Press down to your sitting bones, lift up through the center of your spine, keeping your throat open, take a deep breath. Hinging from your hips just a little bit, exhale, bow forward, walk the hands forward if you're not using a strap. Inhale, pause, root the pelvis down and stretch the spine like a flat back. Exhale, continue to fold. Keep going, Ashimottanasana. You're clasping your big toes, Try splaying your elbows apart. Find a little bit of cobra pose, a little bit of a lift in your chest as you're bowing forward. And then inhale, slowly rise up. Come on down to your back for one more minute of your choice of a cooling posture or movement like happy baby, a brief shoulder stand, maybe legs up, some variation of that. A supine twist if you need some more of it. One minute. As you're practicing for one more minute free time, begin to slow down your exhalations a little longer than your inhalations, inviting your nervous system to a deeper state of calm You might also breathe into your abdomen and out to your mouth. Belly breaths also help to relax the nervous system as well as stimulate digestion. And if you need to release some heat, breathing out to the mouth, out through the mouth can help. As you're starting to make your way towards corpse pose, feel free to use your props. If you've got tension in the lower back, you can place your blocks under the backs of your thighs and knees like this. Let your feet splay out wider than your hips distance. 
Relax your glutes, your lower back, your belly, all the parts that you've been engaging, the muscles on your face, your neck and shoulders, perhaps roll the palms to face up. To allow your shoulders to drop back more easily. You might even have something to cover your eyes. A gentle weight over your eyes can help turn the attention inward. Settling in to a position of rest, stillness, and awareness. Close your eyes and allow your breath to flow naturally. Shavasana.
stay a little longer in this resting corpse pose. We talked about death at the start of this practice. And often the word itself can evoke feelings of fear, fear of the unknown. Corpse pose here symbolizes death. But death in a sense of releasing that which no longer serves. Serves the well-being. So notice what you have chosen to shed in this practice today, whether it be physically, energetically, shedding to create space for something you intend to invite in. Let your body inform you of how it wants to move as you ease gently into a simple stretch, perhaps keeping your eyes closed, listening inward. You might eventually draw your bent knees into your chest, into a fetal position, and slowly turn over to your right side to pause. So from corpse pose, we transition into fetal pose, a symbol of birth. What are you birthing in this practice? What are you birthing as we leave the season of winter and transition to spring. Death can also be perceived as a renewal. Take your time as you feel ready to rise into a comfortable seat. Place your body in a position in which you can sit upright without rigidity, ground evenly. Feel an open heart space and feel ease in your breath and body. So as we sit for the next five minutes in silence, I invite you to observe what comes up in that silence. Maybe it's sounds in the background, maybe it's sensations in the body changing. Maybe it's thoughts coming up, repeating. And can you allow yourself to continue to sit in awareness? Observant of how you are relating to each thing that comes and goes. Without having to entangle yourself into whatever comes and goes. And when you do, because it's natural, remember you have the choice to let go and practice a parigraha, non-attachment. Come back to the seat of wisdom, of witness and wisdom. <laughs> so let's begin.
and begin to feel your physical body and sense the room around you. Closing our practice, you might bring your palms to meet at your heart, bow in. Remember the intention or personal prayer you planted at the start. and to whom you dedicated this practice to. Let's close together with one chant of Om. Take a deep breath. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste.